What is the strangest or most unsettling thing you've seen while driving on a deserted road? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. One night, my husband and I were driving to downtown to see a concert. I was on my phone and he was obviously paying attention to the road. We drove a black Chevy Impala and he saw this car that looked similar color to ours being pulled over. Sucks for them, he said. I looked up and saw that Impala being pulled over and didn't think twice about it. I decided to put my phone down and listen to some jams and see the city views. As I looked up, another Impala, also black, was being pulled over. Babe, that's insane that's the second Impala to be seen pulled over tonight. He being the rational man he is, it's just a coincidence. We were about 10 minutes from our venue and I was keeping my eyes peeled. I tried to see if there were any new announcements but surely there were not, and I was letting my Nancy Drew ways get into my head. We got to downtown two more black Impalas within feet of each other were pulled off the road by police officers. We found parking and decided to ask one of the officers that seemed to be supervising what was going on. Move along ma'am, nothing to see. I guess in my mind I started realizing that no, I wasn't entitled to this information and two something weird was happening. My husband grabs my hand and pulls me to the venue. Enough snooping, let's enjoy this concert. We use the Google app to track our parking so that it's be easy to find once we left. The concert was fun, but compared to other concerts we had gone to for this artist, it was super short. We arrived at 8, when doors opened, and left right before 10. Odd. I pulled out my phone to find our parking spot on Google. It had us tracked at 15 minutes away. That's impossible my husband says, it was like 5 minutes to get here, follow me. He was going the complete opposite way of what Google was telling us. Me not about to be lost in a city that I was unfamiliar said, can we please follow the directions just once, you're going the wrong way. We followed Google's instructions for about 30 minutes. None of it looked familiar and our car was nowhere to be found. I allowed my husband to find our way and we found our car within another 15 minutes. We got inside and turned it on only to hear a radio announcement talking about how an abducted girl was found in a black Chevy Impala just north of where we were. Needless to say that was an odd night. It was a dark and stormy night as they say, except that it wasn't. It was a lovely summer's night with a full moon casting a silver light over the landscape. The IT project that I had been working on was in danger of slipping, so all of us were pulling extra hours to get it finished. I was driving home at about 1am along a country road, miles from anywhere, no lights from remote houses or anything, it was pitch black except for the moonlight. I knew the road well and although it was twisty initially, it came to a long straight stretch of road, maybe the route of an old Roman road. There were no turnoffs either left or right for miles. As I drove, I noticed some headlights in my mirror that seemed to be approaching fast. That's okay I thought, as soon as we get to the straight stretch, he'll pull out and overtake. After a bit, I checked in the mirror again and he was close. Very close. He's going to hit me, I thought. My knuckles were white on the steering wheel and my shoulders were hunched as I stared through the windscreen waiting for the inevitable when nothing. No squeal of brakes, no collision, nothing. And when I checked in the mirror, no lights either, the car had gone. I actually stopped my car to see if I could see an accident because this was I thought the only explanation. In the moonlight, I could see for miles, but no car, no debris, no accident. I have no idea what happened to this phantom car, but now as I write this 30 years after the event, the hairs on the back of my neck are tingling again. My girlfriend and I were driving back from a long road trip. It was about 2 a.m. As we drove through a country lane, my headlights caught sight of an object on the side of the road. Thinking it might be a sheep, very common to see on the roads in rural Wales, I slowed down as they can be very unpredictable when startled. When we got closer, we could see it was a person sat on the verge. I slowed right down and stopped. My girlfriend and I both got out and asked if the person was okay and if they needed help. A woman answered and stated she was lost, didn't know where she was. She seemed somewhat frightened, shivering, but not hostile. I asked where she was heading. She named the next town that we needed to pass through to get home, so I offered to give her a lift. We went over to her, and she was well dressed in branded hiking gear, albeit without a decent jacket, 
just a lightweight Gore-Tex Pack Light 1, and seemed in good shape physically, except for the shivering, as well as clean and hygienic. She didn't seem to be homeless. However, she wasn't carrying a rucksack etc., so she didn't have any water, maps, emergency food, first aid etc. We helped her up, and she was able to walk, seemed lucid, my girlfriend asked her her name, the day and date, all of which she answered. I asked her who our PM was, and she answered correctly. I didn't suspect any mental impairment from alcohol or drugs, medication or lack of, concussion or any psychological issues. And this is where the strange part happens. As we got to my car, she said she needed to relieve herself before we set off. She went into the trees by the side of the car and after a few minutes, my girlfriend shouted her name and asked if she was okay. No reply. I grabbed the torch from my car, and went and searched, but after 10 minutes, couldn't find her, she had just disappeared. My girlfriend and I got in the car, looked at each other in disbelief. We rationalized that we hadn't both hallucinated. After all, we had physically helped her up to her feet, talked to her etc. I noted the GPS coordinates of our location, and we reported the incident at the police station of the town she was trying to find, giving her name and full physical description. We left our details, and asked to be contacted with any news. We heard nothing, but happened to be in that town about six weeks later, and called in the police station for any news. Nothing. No sightings, no reports of a missing person matching our description, no bodies found, nothing. We've talked about what happened many times, maybe she had mental health issues. Maybe she wandered off and got lost again and perished. Maybe she was found again and got back to the town. But hopefully, for the love of God, she is safe and well, and receiving any help she might require. This happened to a dear friend of mine in the 60s. He took his girlfriend home one evening after a date, and was on his way home. She lived on an old dirt road in the country. As he rounded a bend, he looked in his rear view mirror, and there was a young girl in the car with him. He said that he began to scream and drive wildly until he came to the main highway. He looked back again and the girl was gone. We checked it out and discovered that a young girl had been walking home on that road 10 years ago that very evening when a car rounded a curve wildly, running over her. This happened many many years ago on a dark stretch of Highway 78 in Georgia. I was driving home late after working on a project, and I was on my bike, full head helmet. It was cold as hell, but I didn't care. Then I hear something coming up on me. There's no way in hell it's a car, or a truck. When you ride, you kind of learn the sound of bike engines. Whatever the hell out was, I'd never heard it before. Then he was right next to me. It was an immaculate custom chopper with some really weird looking engine in it. He had three lights, the main one and two smaller ones. I turned to look, and the guy's wearing a full Darth Vader helmet. Not like Darth Vader on the side, but it looked like Darth Vader was driving. I must have been pushing 80, he just opened the throttle and shot away from me at least 30 miles faster. Damn I wish GoPro was available back then. In my profession, I encountered many strange things while driving, both day and night, but this the strangest by far of anything I have ever seen and it's from when I was a teenager. In the early 70s, my friends and I used to ride around out in the mountains and get high. I live in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains and we could drive to the top of several different mountain ranges in under an hour. My friend Mark had a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda. It was Plymouth Orange with a 383 V8, 4 speed, it was a super fast car. Since we lived here in the mountains, our girlfriends lived in some isolated areas where the roads were narrow and many were gravel. One weekend night, I don't remember if it was Friday or Saturday, I just know it was a weekend because the girls weren't allowed to go out on weeknights. Anyway, after I took my girlfriend home I passed Mark on the road taking his girlfriend home and we stopped and talked. He asked me if I wanted to ride with him to take his girlfriend home, then ride up to the top of the mountain to check out the stars. It was a beautiful warm summer night and the moon was close to full. One of our other friends, Larry was already with him. I wasn't ready to go home, so we went back to a small general store that we all stopped at every day. The store owner lived next to his store, and he didn't care if we parked there when the store wasn't open, so I parked my car and went with them. After we took Mark's girlfriend home, we started out for the top of the mountain. 
We got to the top of the mountain around midnight and parked at a wide turnaround spot. We only passed a couple of cars on the way. In the 70s in our part of the country most people were farmers or ranchers and they are in the bed by 9 p.m. We were the only one around for miles, and we sat out on the ground and looked at the sky. I don't know if you have ever been on a mountain top on a clear night with no lights from cities or towns around. We were at least 50 miles from the closest small town, and it was not big enough to make any bright light. So we rolled a joint and Larry and I smoked it. Mark didn't smoke weed, or cigarettes, he didn't like to drink either, so he wound up being the driver most of the time. After a couple of hours and several deep discussions about the universe, we packed up and started down the mountain. Mark was driving, I was in the front passenger seat, and Larry was sitting in the middle of the back seat, so he could still be in the conversation with both of us. We were going around 25 miles per hour or so, and about a quarter way down the mountain when something passed us overhead. All we could see was that it was light colored and it was huge, it blocked out the light from the moon and stars. It was moving towards the top of the mountain and it was flying very low not far above the treetops. We all sprung to life from the shock of it and asked each other, did you see that? Mark hadn't smoked anything so we knew that the weed wasn't messing with us, it wasn't that good anyway. Mark turned around in the middle of the road, actually, he wound up the engine and popped the clutch and did a 180 with the tires smoking and we took off after it. The road was winding but it was paved, so we could catch glimpses of it when we got to short straight sections of the road. It wasn't moving very fast and we chased it back to the top of the mountain where we had been parked a short time before. When we stopped and got out, we could see it a lot better. It was huge and round with a strange color of blue lights around the entire circumference, it had a circle of white lights in the center. It was going away from us to the west and up, we watched it until it was out of our sight. We were excited and talking about the fact that we had just seen a UFO, talking about how it could be an experimental military craft or maybe a real spacecraft from another planet. While we were talking, we suddenly heard an extremely loud sound coming up the valley, and then two fighter jets broke out from the valley, not more than 100 yards from where we were standing. Then we realized that the UFO had not made any noise at all. The jets went in the same direction as the UFO to the west and up, we stood there shocked and in disbelief of what had just happened. We went back down the mountain and got my car talking about what we had just witnessed the whole way. We all went home but none of us slept any. And when we met the next day, we didn't know whether to tell people about what we saw, we figured they would say we were crazy or high or making it up. But it turned out that many other people in our area had seen it and reported it. There was a story on the news and people who had seen it were interviewed. We only told our friends about our close encounter, because the people who were interviewed by the news were being made fun of by everyone. But it was seen by over 300 people, so we knew we weren't crazy, we just didn't want to be laughed at. The news said the military wouldn't comment on it, but they didn't deny it either. Larry passed away a few years ago and I moved away, so Mark and I don't see each other anymore but I'm sure he remembers the night we saw a UFO. Many years ago, my husband and I were driving near Reno, Nevada very late at night. The moon was so big and bright, the air warm and fragrant with thousands of acres of sage. The road was empty but for us, and you could barely see the mysterious shadows of rocks and the occasional shrub or tree on the sides of the road. Suddenly, there was a rabbit on the side of the road. Then there were more rabbits. Then more, and at one point, there were hundreds, maybe thousands. We slowed down to witness this, this odd rabbit conference in the middle of the desert in the moonlight. Never seen anything like it before or since, this rabbit gathering. I've always wondered about it and all of the beauty and mystery that happens when we aren't looking. This is going to sound crazy, and I understand, but I know what I saw. I used to work night shift at a small factory. We made knife handles, pistol grips, gun stocks, and some other odds and ends out of wood products. The hours of my shift were 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and I usually took a dinner or lunch break around 1.30 a.m. I live in northern Maine and it was late March, so there was still some snow but not a lot, it was kind of patchy in the woods. So, I took my dinner break and as a smoker, got in my truck and left the parking lot to go have a smoke. I got to a very desolate part of the road, which eventually turns to a dead end, and I saw a large, tall, upright, 
long-haired dark gray and brown figure or animal cross the road about 50 yards in front of me. Was that? No freaking way. I stopped and got out to look for tracks or footprints to surely identify what I had seen but there was nothing. The hair on my neck and arms stood up and I had this eerie feeling like someone or something was watching me, so I rushed back into my vehicle. I have been an outdoorsman my whole life and have seen every animal in the area, and I still don't know what this was. It looked like a very large and hairy human, like Bigfoot or Sasquatch there, I said it. I'm not a huge believer in this sort of stuff, but I still have no idea what I saw that night, sober as a judge. It was an early September night in September 1990, most likely a Tuesday night. It was approaching midnight, and believe it or not, at that time the regional post office in Maryfield, Virginia was open until midnight. Now in 2020, it's only open until 8 p.m. In any case, I dashed out the door to make the 10-minute drive from Annandale through a piece of Fairfax, to get to the Maryfield post office to mail a bill or two that were threatening to be paid late. Driving down the familiar winding two-lane suburban road, Prosperity Avenue, I noted that the houses were set fairly far back from the road with the average lot size something like three-four of an acre. The area was fairly heavily forested with large trees, some original growth that were probably close to 80 feet high. There were scant street lights positioned fairly far apart, and the darkness seemed to swallow up the light they tried to give out. I sped to the post office making it in and out with maybe three minutes to spare. On the return trip, I went around curves and up and down hills until I was about halfway home. And as I passed the small parking lot to Aikens Park on my left, my eyes were trying to resolve what was up ahead. The sky was a dark gray, the canopy of trees was even darker, almost black. The macadam road was lighter than the sky, owing to the mix of so much reflective glass in the mix. And ahead, I saw what I thought was a black sodden log that had fallen across the road. I felt that this was odd, as there was no rain, not a breath of wind and I had just been here, like 7 minutes ago. Soon it appeared to be rolling or moving. What? As I approached, it resolved in my headlights into a 10-foot lizard. I stopped as it blocked my path. The head was moving and it was doing that weird two steps forward, two steps back rocking motion that lizards sometimes do. It had been very flat against the road, but now it was rising up on all four legs, becoming much taller. The weirdest part is that it had those conical, independently rotating eyes like a chameleon. The closest match to it would be a female Jackson's chameleon. But unlike that 14-inch chameleon, this thing was 10 feet long including the tail, the tail was stretched out straight like an iguana. After 3-4 to four minutes, drinking it all in, I went around it in the other lane, thinking that I had been treated to an elusive piece of nature. As I drove away, it hit me, no way was that normal. I turned around to drive back and see it again. This time, I didn't really see it going back, as I was in the opposite lane. I had to drive faster this time because there was a car approaching me from behind. I turned around in the lonely, really dark parking lot for Aikens Park, and I suddenly got spooked. It was past midnight and I suddenly wondered what the heck was I was doing? I realized I didn't want to see that thing again. I turned left and onto Prosperity and approached the scene of the original sighting. I was moving faster this time, trying to get home. But there it was, in the same spot, except now it had rotated 90 degrees and was lined up parallel to the road, with the head facing me. This road was dangerous, it had narrow lanes, no shoulder and a few feet of standing dark water just an inch off the road. There were headlights coming up fast behind me, headlights closing in from the front. I had no choice but to roll over the lizard. It's not as bad as it sounds. I was driving a huge old Ford Fairlane, and I did a quick calculation of its clearance height and its wide wheelbase. If the lizard stayed down on the road, I would cleanly cruise right over it. So I sped up and rolled right over it, feeling nothing, and raced home. When I was safely home, I called the police and told them a large lizard was blocking the road. I sensed some skepticism from the dispatcher, and I never heard anything back. But I'll never forget my encounter and wish that I'd had a modern smartphone with me to record the sighting. This happened about 20 plus years ago or so when I was driving home from visiting my cousins in northern Nevada near Reno. I was on the 395 heading south late at night or early morning and there are certain parts of that highway that are literally pitch black and in the middle of nowhere. It's actually rather scary, 
and you better pray you never break down in those areas. So then, all of a sudden, I heard a noise I can't even begin to describe with words, but it was nothing like anything I've ever heard before. It was something mechanical for sure, not an animal or bird of any kind that lives on this planet anyway. Then the entire sky, and I mean the entire black sky, turned a weird kind of glowing pea soup green color and it was as if it was daytime. You could literally see everything everywhere for over a mile in every direction. It was essentially noon as for how well it was lit up. I was so scared, I pulled over to the side of the road and just sat there for over two minutes just looking all around having no clue what was going on. Mind you, there were no other cars on the road anywhere. Then, as quickly as when it lit up, it was pitch black again. Needless to say, I got rolling again and quickly got back up to cruising speed not having the faintest idea of what I just saw. I turned on the radio and tried to tune to any type of news station, but being that far out away from everything there wasn't very many stations that would tune in, maybe two. Nothing on the radio for the rest of the time on the road about what I saw either. It was sometime between 1977 and 1979 while I was traveling along a two-lane road in Nevada to Arkansas. It was early morning and I was on my way from the office in Jonesboro, Arkansas to a school district some 40 to 50 miles away. For four out of five days of the week, I traveled to a distant school district for my job. On Fridays, I stayed in the office and wrote assessment reports. Most of the roads on which I traveled were the same, with acres upon acres of farmland on either side of this very flat terrain. You could literally see for miles in all directions. Sometimes, you would see farm equipment or a crop duster, small prop plane, in the air. Generally, I saw the fields and nothing else, no other cars even. I was driving my two-door Toyota Corolla that morning, it was a three-speed, manual shift vehicle that was severely underpowered, 1200cc engine. Sometimes, I would drive my employer's new Saab, with a five-speed transmission, it had serious torque and could handily go 90 miles per hour on those flat country roads. Not that day, I was driving the sluggish Corolla that had trouble getting up to 60 miles per hour. I saw a crop duster in the distance that day. It was getting closer and way too low to the ground, I was thinking it had a mechanical problem. Nope, the pilot probably recognized the car and was bored. I looked out of my side window to see this plane coming straight for the driver's side of my car, maybe six feet off the ground. I put the pedal to the metal, but of course, the Toyota wasn't going much faster. The pilot adjusted when I increased my speed, so I knew he wasn't having mechanical problems. At what seemed like the very last second, the plane took a sharp ascent and flew over the top of my vehicle. I swear to this day that I saw a smile on his face as he was flying towards my car. 